considering, yeah, you're, I guess you can say, you got a filthy mouth. And now you got to go to AGT mindset mode. Yeah, I'm a run off. I feel like the second I go on there, I'm like, hey guys, nice to meet you. I promise I'm not going to fucking curse. Bang! You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm like, no, no, bang! You know what I'm saying? Then the whole thing is over. I mean, it will go viral, but it'll be funny. But <laughs> obviously, I'm not going to win America's Got Talent. It'd be cool to have that platform. You know, it'd be a cool experience. There what's up, Daddy O? Hey, what's going on, dude? How you been, man? I just got to the hotel. Uh, looks nice, right? Yeah, it looks uh, pretty, spiffy. pretty cool. It looks real spiffy, yeah. Yeah, it's like one of those like I feel like I'm in the future right now. Man, like everything's controlled through this like cool ass iPad. Oh, through the iPad, huh? All right. Yeah, it's really dope. It's really dope. The yeah, lighting. Like, Shut the I... look, look, look. Ah, oh. nobody in the office is gonna see me masturbating. <laughs> <laughs> That's high tech shit. Yeah, I mean, it looks like they're holding a the UV light over your whole fucking room practically to see what yeah, DNA you got, man. Can't go wrong with this place. It's one of my favorite spaces. It's called uh, Citizens M. Comes with a cool. I don't know if I could take it home, but it comes with a cool like doll and shit. I don't, I don't know. What the fuck whatever. is that? I don't know. I just came with it, so whatever. <laughs> Hopefully, it doesn't have a, a, a in pocket. Well, first time for a comedian, and also it's great that you happen to be from Queens too. So born and raised, I believe, in Bayside, right? That's uh, uh, yeah. Queens. Originally born in Flushing, uh, raised okay. till four years old in Woodside, then Bayside. Oh, nice. You spent some time in Woodside then. Spent some time in Skillman Ave, yeah. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. All right. So as far as we're concerned, I mean, this is our first direct interaction too. I don't know, actually, if you remember, I did meet you in person some years ago at the Hooters in Fresh Meadows. I went there many a times, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, that, that's the first time we met, but that was, like, years ago. Uh, yeah. It was late. I was at one of my boys I met up with, like... Uh, that was when I was first starting to go there. I only got played by two of the waitresses. And now after going there for years, I got played by all of them. <laughs> nice. Yeah. But, I mean, so, but uh, there's a thing, though. I mean, it, I don't know how old you are. I, I think I'm a little older than you are. I'm 37, so give it uh, a take. I'm 34. Day. All right, so three are different. It's not too bad, all right? I'm not that old a fuck. All right, so as far as Hooters is concerned, do you remember a time, at least, like, I remember from, like, Big Daddy, the Adam Sandler film. Up until that time, I think Hooters would still actually require Hooters as far as tits being a requirement to be staffed there properly. I went there that time. I've been back there since, and I passed by randomly yesterday when I was there to go see um, Black Panther. I, right. I just stepped in to see, like, did anything improve as far as the quality of the girls there? No, no offense. Everybody's, everybody needs a job. But <laughs> where have the tits gone? It's not about that no more. It's not and, about uh, that. And, I, and, and one of the girls that worked there, not say, oh, dirty laundry, they used to have to flirt with you. Now they don't even have to do that anymore. So you just got a bunch of people just making their money, and then that's it, man. That's it. I would actually so then, be intrigued if they opened up a shop with, like, males dressed in the Hooters outfits, like a male version. And call yeah. it Peckers. <laughs> well, Woody's. That'd be intriguing. That would actually be bad. You know, and they open up in Hell's Kitchen or something like that. That'd be awesome. <laughs> but, that'd be interesting. Very or interesting. Imagine, or imagine they can, like, uh, they could do something different to make them stand out. Like, oh, um, they wear, like, little G-strings. They cover up the front barely. And they got, like, a roll-out menu. They got to get hard to, like, roll out the <laughs> menu for you on the table. Like, here's today's special. Plop. Like, a guy coming out of nowhere and, like, turning the, you know, like, most of the Applebee's managers, like, they turn the, like, the chair around before they take your order. And then they put the thing behind the ear, the pen. Hey, yeah, guys, yeah. Well, welcome to Peckers. How can I take your order? Like, that'd be so awkward. <laughs> I guess, first off, you kind of went off, per se, as a lot of people told you through DMs last night on IG because you stumbled upon a dog who was running loose and wild on the train. Yeah. And you took you made a live about it. You complained about New Yorkers not giving that much of a fuck as far as like, let alone their fellow man, let alone their fellow dog. But you found a dog. You were able to trace it down, I think. And you were able to get it to, at least to the hand it off to the police, per se. Or... No, no. So basically what happened was, is that I'm on the train and especially like that, like double R, you know, it's it just never seen anything like it and you know being in new york in my whole life i just feel like since the pandemic a lot of things have changed like if this was like early 2000s new york i guarantee you at least everybody would try to help that dog out at least 99 percent people now i feel like everyone like with social media with 
being afraid for being on the train and everyone just being so self-absorbed and it just literally disgusts me nowadays man just the way how every you know it makes me embarrassed to be from new york you know i love new york but this isn't what new york's about you know we're about helping each other yeah we get gangster when we got to get gangster but at the end of the day if you have something as simple flied as an innocent god-given creature lost and scared for its life and it's not even intimidating and you could tell it's a puppy yeah. you know what i'm saying and everyone's just ignoring it and, and just moving and then i had some guy shouting at me oh control that dog bro like no no one gives a fuck <laughs> you know and and that's what hurts me the most is that no one gives a fuck anymore and you know i'm five foot seven i'm 135 pounds so a lot of people also get mad when i have a voice because you know oh this who's this comedian let's pick on him or he's tiny let's pick on him dude no i know I, I have humanity in me i have spirituality in me yeah i do comedy when i'm on stage but you're gonna see me i'm gonna kill it on stage in like half an hour i'll go live too because i got more storage on my phone but nice. when it comes down to the serious matter of i'm disgusted and it just was shocking like there was a random door so I, I'm, not, I'm not i'm not sure who i was next to but someone had a leash on that door mm -hmm. and then they, they took the leash off and as soon as they took the leash off and I'm not paying no mind to it. I'm like, oh, the dog is probably trained or something like that. I didn't pay attention to the owner. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. As, as soon as we got to Penn Station, the door opens. The dog just starts running out. So I'm already recording. I'm like, oh, look, the dog. I started making a joke. I, I didn't know the dog was actually going to, you know what I mean? And then once I started oh, running yeah. off, I'm, I tried to record it. And then that's why it was so short. Because I was like, yo, yo, dog, dog, hello. And I'm waving at everybody. Everyone's just looking at me. And they're looking at the dog laughing like it's a fucking joke. But God forbid if it was one of their dogs. Like me, I have seven dogs that we put in rotation. I don't have seven dogs at my house right now. No, no. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it through rotation. You know what I'm saying? We'll keep right. like two dogs at a time and everything like that. And I, I love yeah. them so much. And it just, like, I picture if that was my dog or any dog that I ever liked out there. And if anyone's watching this live, if you, any pet, it could be a freaking pet turtle, you know, crawling. Like, if you care about it, you know, it's life at the end of the day. Yeah, of course, of course. An innocent That's life. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's bad enough that we walk past homeless people. And I get it. Like, these are decisions that are out of, you know, you don't know if they're going to try and scam you. You know if they're really homeless. You don't know that. But if it's a little innocent dog and it's not barking and not being threatening, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. come on, you can't, you know, just pet, you know, like try to get attention. This happened a couple of years ago. I was driving on the highway and we were going to like a Hamptons party and I saw a stray dog. I literally stopped traffic. Everyone kept driving. There was a dog on the fucking highway, dude, on the southern state. I parked. My friends were like, yo, we got to go to the party. I said, yo, there's a dog, dude. And then some other random girl stopped, which was awesome. I don't know who she is. And, and we, we, the dog wasn't saved. that ran away, but at least it got into, you know, off the highway. We literally were trying to get it until it got off the highway. So right. it's it just like, just to me, I'm just so, like, if you go on Instagram right now what, and, and you go on your scroll, what are you going to see? A bunch of girls like this with their selfie cameras, you know what I'm saying? Or dudes flashing money. It's, yeah, I hate it. I, I literally hate it. As funny as I do comedy, I can make jokes about it. I literally am so disgusted with what technology and humanity has become, dude. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like, I always said this quote, uh, and this is my own quote, the more technology advances, the more lazy we become. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, back in the day, if a, if a woman wanted to get attention back in the day, right? In school, what would she have to do? She had to flirt with the popular guys. Yeah. She would have to, you know, bring herself out there, wear the makeup, wait, flaunt things. Now all a girl got to do is take a selfie or shake her ass for 30,000 likes and 19 DMs and 20 sugar daddies. Yeah, pretty much. And that's 99%. I'm not saying that's every single woman, but that's 99% of New York City women. You know, and I've been traveling all yeah. year. I met decent, dope-ass women that are even more beautiful in and out. But this is what society has made us to go. You go to a club right now, all you're going to see is a bunch of girls like this. Like, like the world owes you something. Like, you know what I'm saying? And a bunch of dudes sitting in VIP, like 30 of them went on one bottle. And then they act, they all act like, everyone acts like their shit don't stink. And it's disgusting, mm -hmm. man. You know? And then when I come in, you're better than me? No. Just no because, one's better yeah. than anybody. No one's better than nobody. And then when I go on these little, quote unquote, random rants or these little posts I post, everyone says, oh, he must be drunk right now. First of all, I don't drink like that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I actually wanted to ask you about the year, brothers, because I know uh, yeah. coming up next week, Wednesday is number 15, right? Or if I, hopefully I got the number right. Uh, November 16th. It's number 15, though. Yeah. 
Right, number Sorry. 15 event-wise, but on the 16th. Uh, November 16th, but it's, yeah, Brothers 15th. It's my 15th yeah, producer 15. show, yeah. Right. So as far as I know, you've been you've been working. It's obvious on your timeline. You've been going here, there. You're in D.C. right now, of all places, ready to Correct. go on, you know. What makes you want to take on that task of heading up your own show? And how soon do you feel confident enough to do so? Because you got 15 of them coming up now, this number, being number 15. Do you have it, like a, a team you go to, people you trust in that much to like put it all together and make it happen? It's just me. You know, um, business cards, designed it, printed them, paid for it myself. Um, the logo, I spent seven hours on it, redesigning it. Um, so basically what I do is I go to different... It, the whole reason why I started the Year Brothers was, you know, like even the gentleman... All right, so... I'm gonna try to make this as quick as possible. Um, when I first started comedy, it was cool. You know, I did open mic, it went great. And then uh, Chris Murphy, shout out to him, took me underneath his wing and mentored me for seven weeks. And I'll never forget, I was standing in front of him and it was so awkward. And then he just says, talk, I'm like, about what? He goes, about whatever you want. Then everyone was so excited, like the support I had, like, family members, friends, people I haven't seen in a while came out to see me in the city. It was crazy. Hmm. You'd think six years later, they'd still be there. I get, what, one person? And I got I, I, I literally <laughs> begged them to come and I got to pay for their entrance. That's oh, what man. it's become. The more you chase your dreams, the more, like, it starts to The support starts to dissolving. Not that yeah, I hate yeah. anybody. It's just, you're on your own at this point. Yeah, they're going to help you. Everyone's going to be happy. Oh, cool, he's trying something new. Great. But now when it comes down to it, it's up to you at this end of the day. So, yeah, I'm sorry. No, you're so, good. I went from doing shows. Then I started doing bringer shows. Bringer shows, you know what bringer shows are, right? Mm, what's that? So, basically, what bringer shows is, um, can you, am I clear? Everything good? Yeah. All right, cool. Good. Bring a show is basically that you can't, if you go to a comedy club, you're not allowed to perform unless you bring a certain amount of guests. So oh. hence the name bring. Okay. Gotcha. 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 Yeah. And yeah. you know, the cool part about it, everyone eats, you know, they get their money. You get that cool backdrop of the famous logo. You get what I'm saying? So, yeah. but it's very stress inducing for the comedian because, and there's a lot of talented people out there that they won't give a break to because they can't bring that many people. You get what I'm saying? Right, okay. So then I, yeah. so you start off as a uh, open micer, then you do the bringer shows. Then you see if you could get past. You know, um, I just got to the point where I would be past some places, past no places. Um, I just got sick of it. You know, not no disrespect to any comedy club or anything out there. I just got sick of, oh, I got to bring a certain amount of people. Oh, I'm only allowed this amount of time. Like, like I'm just like, I still do it. I don't mind it. I respect the game. You get what I'm saying? But the whole reason why I created the Yeah Brothers was, I don't know. I like, like watching all these comedy clubs and everything like that. I was like, yo, I would do it so different. Yeah. And I did. And, you know, 15 nice. shows in, you know, each show is different. You know, and, you know, if you see a couple of names on the lineup that I keep putting, it's because I have faith in them. You know what I'm saying? And then now we're at the point where, all right, the fate's over. They're good. So now I got to switch up the roles. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm, okay. And it's so cool how people from the comedy cellar, you know, Spider Cuz, Mike Ruger, Side Talk NYC, people from Stephen Colbert, uh, they want to do the show. They want mm. to. Nice. Excited for it. And then now I got people hitting me up every day almost. Yo, when's the next year, bros? When can I hop on? When can I hop on? And I'm like, yo, please, I swear to God, I got everybody. Just give me a little bit of chance. Cause like I've been booking like you wouldn't believe. You know, and, and that's a really cool thing that a lot of people really want to be part of the experience. So when people ask me who are the Year Brothers, the Year Brothers was created in 2010. It was my brother, one of my brothers, Mike. Uh you wanna know how the name started? Yeah. He saw a girl beating the shit out of a guy on Bell Boulevard. <laughs> We were all drunk. And then the guy's like, hey, man, step here to me. And I was like, oh, oh. And then BZ looked at his name. His name was BZ. He went, <laughs> he pointed at the guy. And he went, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone started dialing. I started dialing. So then the next week, 
there was like almost a fight between two guys at the bar and bell you know bell boulevard was crazy back then still is so yeah. then i said yeah after someone got knocked out so anytime something crazy happened we would go <laughs> yeah so one day someone said yo are those the yeah brothers and i like that and then they called us the nice. yeah now they they're all doing their own thing you know my brother's engaged the other one's married kids everyone's doing their own thing i'm proud of them they got successful jobs so you know me making this company name i wanted to pay homage to it so oh, okay okay what better way to call it than the yeah brothers so when oh, people ask me who are the yeah brothers it's homage to them but if you actually think about it we all are the yeah brothers anyone that's on the show yeah got oh, okay so they're honorary yeah brothers whoever like ends up being yeah. on the lineup of doing the yeah. thing that night oh nice yeah so in that yeah. case with the yeah brothers who and i am gonna do like an old woman show i'm gonna call it the yeah sisters it's gonna be a special <laughs> show so yeah nice all genders involved that's good Yes, but yes. if you had, if you have a dream get at all for the Year Brothers soon or eventually, who would that be? Or who can you think of that you want to get? Like that's my get. That's who I want. Well, Cipher Sound's been trying to do my show, but see the problem is I got a lot of already established comedians that want to do my show, yeah. but their schedules are so hectic. Like they try to squeeze me in, and then they can't do it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that's why I never put them on the flyer. If they want to do a quick drop in, like I'm personal friends with Michael Shea's new assist assistant. I have a mm -hmm. video where Michael Shea blessed me and said, yo, I, I messed with this guy. This is during, during the pandemic. You know what I'm saying? Like nice. Dave Chappelle told me, and this isn't me name dropping, like this is the actual truth. I have a joke about it, but the truth is Dave Chappelle told me one-on-one, -on -one, yo, prove yourself. The second someone in my camp mentions something good about you, I'll be more than happy to surprise you and share the fucking stage with you, which I think is awesome. Oh, wow. So if there's any way to, for me to prove my, and this is before I started expanding this year about this thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, you shit. Know? Okay. God damn. Oh, DJ MU, that's my, that's my uh, personal DJ. That's the guy, uh, Shade 45, um, Sirius XM, a phenomenal DJ with Funk Flex, everybody, you name it. He worked with them. I was friends with him nice. since uh, public school. And, you know, I got a lot of DJs that want to work with me also as well. But I told him, DJ MU? Unless he's not available, I'll work with you guys. But he's nice. my he's my guy. You know what I'm saying? And if he's not available, I'll be more than happy to work with somebody else. But DJ MU is my main guy. And he's just phenomenal at what he does, man. You know what I'm saying? Like the setup, he brings his own equipment, uh, helps me out with everything, helps promote, like, genuine soul. And this is what, if everybody acts the way me and him act with each other, yeah. everyone could be successful so fucking quicker. But the problem is, and this is what my mentor told me, all these comedians, all these music artists, all these DJs, crabs in a bucket. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You ever heard that term? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So basically, I was like, what's crabs in a bucket? He goes, be careful when you're trying to make it, my, my mentor told me. Crabs in a bucket. So basically, crabs in a bucket, you put, you put a couple crabs in a bucket. It's everyone trying to be successful. What are they going to do? They're going to try to get out of that bucket. Mm -hmm. and how do they get out of that bucket? They scratch and they claw and they hurt each other. They, they, they hurt each other. You get what I'm saying? And... See, he's going to be on Series XM tonight at 9. Love you too, my brother. So, Sweet. yeah, it's awesome, man. So, if we all just work to, if crabs work together, they could help each other out. If they just don't go crazy making it. The problem is everyone is going crazy to make it. No one's trying to network. Everyone's just trying to use each other. I was used, I'm not going to say no names, but I was even used by a bunch of people that used me as a stepping stone. And I learned that later on in life. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. It happens. No bad blood, no animosity, whatever. I'm not mentioning no names. That's it. But you live and you learn. And then those people that still treat you good, you keep them close. And you always take care. Who would you name as a part of your comedy Mount Rushmore? Ooh. Like just stand up or? Dead alive, anybody you can think of. You no, want just to throw stand up? up? Just stand up. Okay, just stand up. Uh, well, actually, sorry, just all comedy, all Oh, you're killing me, Smalls. All right, then we'll stick the stand up there, so make it easy for you. Dead or alive, right now? Um, yep. A lot of people think that Dave Chappelle's my favorite of all time. He's not. Mm -hmm. You know, um, my favorite, believe it or not, is George Carlin. Okay. Yeah, okay. I think he's genius. Uh, the way up, down, left, right. You know the way he does. <laughs> He would definitely be number one face on my Marilyn Monroe show. Second would be Dave Chappelle. Okay. I'm, I'm, you know what it is? It's, it's just who I grew up watching. 
You know what I'm saying? So it's not like they're the best, and I'm not trying to argue with anybody, but this is who I grew up watching. But if we're just talking strictly stand-up, yeah. it would be, uh, yeah, George Carlin, Dave Chappelle. I got to throw him up there. You said Dead or Alive, right? Andrew Schultz? Dead or Alive. Andrew Schultz. Yeah, Schultz has been really coming up. I think he's, he's a genius. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Uh, very good. Very amazing. Um, Dane Cook. Early Dane Cook, not now Dane Cook, but he had two amazing specials that I'm a huge fucking fan of. Okay. Um, I know it's, it's not. I'm probably gonna get cursed. Like, whoa, 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 whoa. And 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 I, I don't know how many heads are on Mount Rushmore. If I could pick one more, go ahead. It's four, by the way. But yeah, go ahead. as many as you want. It's four. I can't pick one more. All right. No, you can it, go ahead. And it's not just more. saying names. It was just actually watching like how he inspired like a whole generation and like that. And believe it or not, I didn't see him until later on. And I was like, whoa, this guy's genius. You know. Um, it would have to be Richard Pryor. You know what I'm saying? And this mm. is just like mm. like me growing up and seeing. But I, if it was just me and taste in general, Bernie Mac would be there. Uh, yeah, Bernie. Yeah. So, is the person certain? Yes, the person was 32. So, sorry, someone's replying to a story. So, um, yeah, like I could keep going. But like the real reason why I got into comedy was like my favorite Saturday Night Live characters could do that. It was the era where Adam Sandler, Chris Farley, David Spade, uh, Rob Early Schneider, 90s, yeah. Alec mm -hmm. Baldwin before the Bang Bang. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> that was that was the real reason why I got into comedy. And then because I didn't even have HBO, I would just use my grandma's account whenever I stayed at her house. And you know, I, I would watch, that's how I, I started watching Dave Chappelle and like Half Baked when I was young, and it was really dope. <laughs> nice, so, nice. Yeah. So yeah, that's that. Okay. Uh, but one day I have my audition. It's uh, with America's Got Talent. So yeah, that was my next thing actually too. Congrats oh, on having okay. that. Because Thank that's you. That's a big thing. Yeah, I didn't expect them to actually approve of a submission video. That was pretty cool. And I'm guessing you're already prepped and ready to do what you're gonna do Monday no. for that. No. Nope. I am not prepared at you're all. Going in willy nilly. I've been all around. See, the problem is my content is very R rated. You know what yeah, I mean? I've heard. Yep. It's not. Yeah, I'm, I I love being edgy. I love saying the craziest shit, like, and it's true stories too. I you know, eighty percent true, twenty percent creativity. Those are my stories. You know. That's what and, I wanted to ask you though. Actually, sorry to jump in, but I just want to ask you real quick about that. So, considering yeah, you're I guess you can say you got a filthy mouth, and now you got to go to AGT mindset mode. Yeah, I'm a that off. I feel like the second I go on there, I'm like, hey guys. Nice to meet you. I promise I'm not going to fucking curse. Bang. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm like, no, no, bang. You know what I'm saying? The whole thing is over. I mean, it will go viral, but it'll be funny. But <laughs> Obviously, I'm not going to win America's Got Down, but it'd be cool to have that platform. You know, it'd be a cool experience. But I was going to ask because, of course, I haven't watched AGT before and everything, too. Usually, it's more like talent-driven or like some unique little hokey-pokey thing you got to do. You're a comedian. No. What do you no. have in mind doing? Not anymore. Not anymore. I oh, got no. two two colleagues that are very nice and talented people. One is Usama okay. Siddique. Um, he's a comedian, stand up. You look him up afterwards, I'll send you his link. Yeah. Awesome yeah. comedian. He was supposed to do two of my shows, but bookings happen, man. You know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. when you're up there, you gotta take that first. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Of course, of course. And I would never get mad at that. That's number one. And then Jacob Williams. Jacob Williams always makes himself available for my shows. So I love that guy. So they mm -hmm. both want America's Got Talent. Like actual on stage and they did not get buzzed. Really? And they were just doing like comedy, stand up, whatever. And yep. Okay, because I that's what I was afraid of. Like I was afraid you. of that too. See, I almost said I was afraid of that shit too. I'm trying so yeah. hard not to fucking curse. You see what I'm saying? Like this is what happens when you grow up <laughs> watching South Park. You know what I mean? That like too. it's really <laughs> freaking hard not to do it, man. But um Yeah, so what else uh what else did you want to ask? Well, no, that was just that, like, do, do you have to, like, switch mindsets knowing you're going to AGT at all? Uh, after besides tomorrow, I'm going to take a break from social media just so I can have my, on Sunday, all day, I'm not posting, not doing anything, literally rewriting a set. Yeah. And I, I don't write my sets. I literally think them through and I only write bullet points. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. I want the set to come out as organic as it possibly can. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because... You can tell when something's really rehearsed when it's on stage with a bunch of comedians and they all fail at the same time. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And and the one thing that I hate is when a comedian 
goes on stage and they talk like this. I hate that. Like, like everyone thinks like, oh, you're trying to be Chappelle when you're sitting down on the on the stool. No, I'm not trying to be like Chappelle when I'm sitting down on the stool. There's a freaking stool there. My back is fucking tired. I travel for an hour and a fucking half. And honestly, I like the feeling of when I do a show, yeah, it's stand-up, but it's pretty cool when you sit on the stool because it, you know what it makes me feel like? It makes me feel like it's a campfire story. <laughs> Gather around, children, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, like, and just sitting around, you move around. I, and, and when I do sit down, and I, I have moments where the sitting down actually contributes to the story. Okay, yeah. You know, there's a stool on comedy for a reason, on the stage. You and know, it's rare to see anyone use it, you're right. It's not just meant for Chappelle. It, it could be for fucking anybody. <laughs> Or not just you know, anyone that says, oh, oh, I had like three other comedians that said that other comedians are trying to be like Chappelle because they sat on a stool. No, no one's trying to be like Chappelle. There's a stool there. You're allowed to fucking sit. Whoever right. sits down, let them fucking sit. Who gives a fuck? See, that's the problem is everyone wants to compare somebody to somebody else and think that they're trying to emulate them when they're just trying to do their own thing. You know what I mean? Exactly. And my fucking back hurts, man. So, yeah. Awesome. So, we'll let you go do your thing. Thank you again for the time. Again, you guys um, you know, more. Okay. Uh, in that case, let me see. What's the farthest you traveled so far to do a gig? Alaska. And they got the best pussy out there. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, I adopted a cat. Beautiful cats. From Alaska? Yeah, best pussy out Oh, God. <laughs> nah, fuck with you. Okay. <laughs> see, I got you. I got God you. I got you. I got you. You did, God damn it. You did. <laughs> I would think they're preserving on ice or something. It must be that good then, if they got it like that. See, I was going to open up America's Got Talent like that. I mean, technically, <laughs> I'm not cursing. They'll be the perverts if they ask me because they think I'm being perverted. Ah, who's really winning? Now, all the side, the first time I tried for comedy, um, I think it was, uh, like, I've been to California, but that was just partying and then, like, one little networking. It was all for networking. But, like, actually traveling, oh, my God, I went by myself in the middle of winter earlier this year to Chicago. Mm. For comedy. I, I did the Laugh Factory. Nice. And they almost okay. robbed me right afterwards. Uh, of course they were. Down. I have a live video still. Yeah, I was in Chi Town, and it's not. It's tougher than New York. I love New York, but that I've is, been. I've seen. <laughs> Chirac is not no joke, man. Yeah. I mean, if you go, go with at least four people. Do not go alone. I made that mistake. <laughs> and I was staying in the Williamsburg side of Chicago, and it was still freaking scary. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that oh, was why. I mean, the cool part about it, I got to eat a Gordon Ramsay's burger, and I went to Kanye's house. Lyft driver brought me there. We were smoking weed on the way there. He turned off his thing. It was the coolest thing. Bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can't make that up. But yeah, so uh, it was Chicago, man. And, and it was cool. I, I think one of my goals this year is to see. So I I don't know if you saw, but all my year brothers, more than likely, it's always in Bayside. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I do it in Bayside, I don't have to. It's just my hometown. And I wanted to pay homage. Like, hey. I threw myself to the wolves all pandemic yeah. and everything like that. And I know some people are scared because, you know, with the viruses are out and all the robberies and everything, you know, based on a beautiful, safe neighborhood. So why not I bring the talent there for once? You know yeah. what I'm saying? And that's what I did. And it went great. And I'm happy. And my last show there is going to be Dempsey's, which is next week. And then I might be, I might be open to do one more at this new Greek spot in Bayside. They, they, the company reached out to me. So we're going to see about that. Okay. But if not, as soon as that 2023 happens, I'm not doing Bayside at all. And no disrespect mm -hmm. to anybody there. I got to expand the brand. I already solidified it there. I, I spoiled them, basically. So, nice. And there's nothing wrong with that. I already, they paid their dues. I paid my dues. Cool. Now I got to move on to the next chapter, which is expanding the Year Brothers, you know, awesome. nationally. And then if we could go globally the next year. So, yeah. La I mean, 2020 was all about networking. 2021, it was about you know, hosting and performing and doing all that. 2022 is all about my little baby, which is the Year Brothers. So let's see what 2023 has. Hopefully it's good. Definitely. I already had 10 mental breakdowns. I can't afford another one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So with the America's Talent Audition, yeah. I just got to explain that real quick so people don't get yeah. confused. It's, it's a audition with the producers and the writers. So is this potentially to get on the round that auditions that make it to TV, right? Or anything? It's the pregame, basically. Okay. Got it, got it, got it. So if that goes good, then next round, 
got Simon looking at me awkwardly. Uh, Wait, I thought, is American Got Talent the one with uh, Simon, Howie Mandel, and Sofia Vergara still? Or? Yeah. And I don't know if they still do it. I think, they, I think they switch it up. I'm not sure who's on that cast anymore, but whatever it is is whatever we'll see. You know what I'm saying? I'm ready for anything at this point, you know? And I'm not scared. Um, I got three goals. Either America's Got Talent, MTV's Wild and Out, or Saturday Night Live. Mm. Let's see what the universe got in store for me. Let's see. I'll drink that. And if too. it's none of the above, I'm doing fucking porn. Fuck everything. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, it's over. All right, it's over. It's over. Move the mic. Move the mic. Thank you. All right.